play obviously the piece de resistance of me to play is Sean Strickland on flipping Shop Show. So on Food Truck Diaries. We'll end it with this because I need to jet off as well. It's already two hours. But yeah, this is legitimately might be one of the best Food Truck Diaries I've ever seen in my entire life. I've seen clips, but I want to watch most of this and see what he said also. Sean Strickland is also, you know, somebody that I'm a fan of in terms of a fighter in the UFC. Unfortunately, you know, things didn't go for him the way they probably should have gone for him in his last fight. Um, he probably went into that thinking he could do something and it didn't work out the way he wanted it to work out. But hey, the shit happens. Um, but in general, I like him. I like how delusional he is. I like how crazy he is. I like how much he speaks his mind. I love the fact that he rides motorcycles. I love the fact that he, you know, just is a is what I would describe as somebody as like a real badass. I'm a big fan of him, really. And I know he may be, he's suffering from the effects of CTE in some way, but I think he's a really wicked personality, in my opinion. He kind of reminds me of like a crazy US version of like Bisbing in a weird way. So he did Food Truck Diaries and it was an absolute barnstorm of a show, honestly. Barnstorm. It's maybe one of the best ones ever. And is it, a, is, are they using a green screen or is that just a really nice camera? It looks way better than before. Finally, it's starting to look like a food truck diary show, even though it's still in a car park. I said before, I think they need to do this in like an apps in in like a food court. Um, what was I gonna say? Like you know those food court places that you have where loads of no those food truck places you have where loads of food trucks come and park up, and then you go and you know choose what you want to eat and shit. They should have it that filmed there because that would be better because you'd be around people. Maybe there'd be a small group of fans that would huddle around. That'd be pretty sick. That'd make for actually good content. Maybe someone will shout something funny. You could use in the skit. You could use for the piece all together. That would actually be good. But the fact that they film it outside, they grab the food, then they go and sit in the studio. It just takes away from the whole premise of the show. It makes no sense really. But anyway, let's play it. Um, Sean Strickland on Food Truck Diaries. He's the number seven middleweight in the world. He has a big old fight coming up. He rode his Harley Davidson from Orange County all the way to Calabasas, California to come on down here. It's Sean Strickland on this week's Food Truck Diaries. I'm feeding them Mexican bowls. Let's go. Make it I know I talk fast and sometimes cough and burp and spit at the same time, but just take your breath. You don't need to be ranting so quickly. It's your show. There's no rush. You edit the thing yourself. Just take a breath hey, yeah, we had a... I was splitting lanes like 120 last night and I was like I shouldn't do this but fuck this traffic so my question for you is uh, obviously your manager works with Izzy too you guys are gonna have to fight each other I mean I gotta fight a big scary black man first. yeah you, you got you gotta get through it's a scary motherfucker. yeah he's a bad yeah. man I'm not Izzy I'm not gonna run around with my fucking twinkle toes and you know run around like a little bitch you're, you're gonna go forward on him. I'm gonna try. You gonna do your thing. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking try. Did you, uh, you know, coming off the last fight with Pierre, I, I had you beat him. I thought you were gonna beat Pierre. I had, me and your manager were talking about this before. I thought it, so, nine times out of 10, I think it's a good fight for you. Just shit happens. Yeah. Especially at this level. You know, man, ugh, fuck. I, if it was five rounds, I'd be a little bit more patient. Yeah. It's one of those fucked up things where I shit you guys not, I shit you not. Right before I go to a fight, I tell my, my coach, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna be like, Two and a half minutes in, I'm gonna fill this motherfucker out, and then I'm gonna shoot on him. Two and a half <laughs> minutes in, I get caught. So you know, fighting dude, he's a big fucking scare Brazilian. He's talented. Grew up in fucking poverty. He's a mean motherfucker. You know, he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. I got clipped. This is what it is. Yep. On to the next. Yeah, but then on to the next. The good thing is you beat Jared Cannonier. You're right. The thing I didn't really get about the Alex Pereira fight was that he actually didn't really go for the takedown straight away. For some reason he had this really strange belief that he was actually going to compete with Alex Pereira on the feet with his striking. It made no sense. Alex Pereira already looked like an absolute animal in there in terms of his, you know, just his size, his, you know, his height, his width, everything about him just looked massive compared to Strickland in the ring. But I just didn't get why he didn't just go straight for the takedown. Just go straight and start rest, turn it into an ugly wrestling match, turn it into a grappling match straight away. And then it just, you know, obviously ended the way it ended. But still, props to him for going in there, man, in the first place. Because that guy is scary. Right back in the title shot. So yeah, it's not like you easy. jump all the way back in the queue. like the, yeah. the, the narrative. And why is Brendan standing like Trump? Is it me or has Brendan got that little, that Trump standing thing? Do you know what I mean? I think some of you might know what I mean here. Let me just get this up on the screen. Because I think that's the same thing, right? Let's see if I can find this. Donald Trump standing 
right? Let's see if I can get this on here. Because I honestly do think he kind of looks like Trump, how he stands weird. How he's got that thing where he tries to make himself look taller and bigger than what he actually is. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, <laughs> this is the, I'm not going to lie. I know you Americans hate him, but I miss this guy for his entertainment alone. Look at this. Look at this. Look at how he's standing there. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? <laughs> Look at how he's standing. He does that weird, like, he sounds like a minotaur, isn't it? But he does it so he can appear taller, right? It's like a weird tall thing. Look, <laughs> he's standing. <laughs> <laughs> let's move this on let's move let's move this tab down there where the video is so i can flick between the both of them flick of the wrist flick of the wrist don't you think this is the same thing no like why is he start why why is he standing like that like <laughs> I don't know why this is making me laugh, but honestly, I miss this guy. I really do, man. He was absolute psycho. Do you remember these press conferences he did outside where he just do them next to a helicopter and it's just blaring out? Why was that? Why was that? <laughs> it's such a power move because he didn't want to answer the questions anyway. So he put them in the most uncomfortable, high stress situations where they're answering questions where there's a literal army fighter flipping helicopter there presidential one like flipping propellers just spinning super fast <laughs> basically tell you have to hurry up hurry up and he can't hear you and then he probably like he walks off and shit like it's just honestly <laughs> this dude man this dude absolutely incredible man absolutely incredible. <laughs> oh oh man honestly let's continue of a view versus Izzy's a pretty damn I know game. I actually slid in the Jared's DMs and I asked him if he let me win but I don't What'd know What'd he say? Did he respond? He was on the fence with it you know I said I'd give him half my purse so He's like oh, that's not a bad gig Yeah Is that legal? I don't know I, Yeah I don't know yeah, That's alright But it, Fuck, as long I mean, as he didn't respond Look at Jemaya versus Kevin Holland dude we all blend the, We're all blurring the lines of what's legal these fucking days <laughs> Dude again let me take the heat for that shit because I, I thought it was suspect I thought oh. the UFC 279 was suspect I guess Oh, the hands on the chest as well. Here we go through the conspiracy theories again. A lot oh. of heat for that. And even I wasn't like, I'm not sold on this being a, a fixed job here. I'm just saying a little, it was a little too convenient for me. Everyone's like, this is ridiculous. How dare you? It happened very fucking weird. I'll That's what I that. said. It'll be weird. And you know, here's the thing about Chimaev. He's UFC's golden boy. They love the Chimaev. You know, everybody needs some Chimaev in their life, especially Dana White. Yep. Yeah. So, I and mean. You, and you think, you? I heard you, uh, you're, in a previous interview, you were saying, Shemaev would probably be better at 80. He should be at 70. He'll be champ at 70, but 85. So if easier. it wasn't for my accident, I would still be 70, and I'd be better at 70. But, you know, I had to go fucking hit a truck or a van, so that kind of put a cramp in my style. But, dude, life is better at 85. I mean, I'm fighting in eight weeks. Dude. We're about to eat a fucking food truck, you know? I don't know. I think it's... It's like gluten-free. It's healthy. This thing ain't fucking healthy. Uh, no, they got, they got fries, dude. Yeah, but yeah so, you know... Fat. Yeah, a 70 would be better for him, but the 85, dude, kind of takes his, the 70 takes his soul from you a little bit. Yeah. So he'll be happier at 85. Don't you find it interesting how unable Brendan is to, like, bounce off somebody that has, like, a genuine personality? Like, Sean Strickland might be a little bit, you know, he might have his bell rung a couple of times, but he's a genuine personality. Like, he's somebody that's got something to say. Whether crazy or not, he's got an actual opinion. Whether it's controversial or not. He's got some interesting stories. He doesn't mind flying off the handle. He doesn't mind saying things you're not meant to say. And he's just a genuine, interesting person to listen to, right? Entertaining in that regard. And just a little bit unpredictable. And you can tell Brendan is tense. Like he's like, he doesn't know what to do. He's like, he's struggling to like work out what he should do. Should they like join in with a joke? Should he like, you know, tell him to calm down? Like it's it's just it's just an interview. It doesn't really matter. Just banter, man. Let's just have fuck around with him as well. He can't fuck around. That's the thing. He's incapable of fucking around. And I think that whole thing when people say, oh, people said I think people have said beforehand that, oh, it's because he was an athlete. He's never really had that kind of like ribbing thing but i don't think it's true when you do athletics I've, i did it in a small part i played football i did i did you know cross country and all that but malarkey 
you you fuck around all the time. Everyone fucks around. It doesn't matter what level it is. Locker room stuff happens all the time. You fall around. You chat. You chat. You rinse each other. You you play against different people, different personalities, different age groups. You learn how to kind of fuck around with people. And I think his inability to fuck around people is just his own personality trait. He just doesn't know how to do it. Doesn't like it when people laugh at him. So he naturally just kind of stays away from it because he never liked to be the person kind of getting ripped and kind of torn apart because he doesn't really have any good comebacks. So he's really struggling here to really kind of get a grip of what to do with fucking um, Sean Strickland, who just seems to be willing and ready to just fall around and have a laugh. Ivan, you know, he'll be fine, 85. And you like him at 85? Like you take, you like take I mean, a shot a, at him? He's a... He's a big motherfucker, you know. He should be fine. He's Scary fine. dude, yeah. Yeah, he's a big motherfucker. He should be fine. I don't really think. Um, I don't really think that you know he's gonna have an issue at eighty-five. No, not I. He's a big. Have you obviously you've seen him in person? He's a big. Yeah, dude. we we train a lot. He's a solid dude. Oh, you've trained with him? Yeah, no, he's a good dude. He's a good fucking dude. And how's it go training? Oh, fucking a man. He he like everybody to him is a fucking. There's a video of me like asking him to go light on people. And everybody to him, dude, is a fucking punching bag. <laughs> like you could be toys. like, you could be like, Chimaya, this guy is like three fights, dude. He's new. He's like, he's a fucking fifty-fiver. Don't hurt him. And Chimaya is like, I understand. I understand. And next thing you know, Chimaya's on top and beating the Just fuck out of him. Breaking his neck. But I mean, he. But you. Here's the thing, though. You like training with that intensity. I respect that. Like if I go Me to too. someone's, if I go to someone's gym, and unless a coach says, "Hey, be nice to this motherfucker," like I'm not gonna be nice to your team. I'm gonna try to knock them all out. Why the fuck not? I feel like <laughs> but, uh, but... Right on cue. Right on cue. With what um, Ray Chan joint says. <laughs> Doesn't strictly care his own sparring partners. Yep, he does. And he's made it on camera. <laughs> the word on the street is you go pretty hard too. I mean, you're respectful, but you go hard too. It depends, man. I mean, it depends. Like, you know. Yeah, Uche, you know you made a good point about the clenching of the fist. Like I said, he's nervous. He doesn't know how to deal with a genuine personality. Look at how red his hands are. Like, this is nerves. Like, he's absolutely not sure where this is going to go. And he doesn't know how to deal with somebody that's got an absolutely unprincipled personality. He's a real maverick, right? Because Sean Strickland actually would be, he sounds like the, he kind of comes, he kind of reminds me of like, um, oh, what's his face? Oh, what's that comedian guy's name? He's got the same sort of voice. He kind of reminds of him, Cadence. Oh, uh, he, he comes a lot on, he used to come a lot on Drogan, but he stopped now. The one with the crazy suits and he lives in the middle of the desert somewhere and he has like a wife that's Asian and he lives in a compound. What's his name? Sean Strickland reminds me of that guy. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? He's really funny. He wears like colorful suits and different sort of stuff on stage. Um, and he talks like that and he smokes a lot of cigarettes. What's his fucking name? Doug, St Doug Stanhope. Yes. Sean Strickland gives me Doug Stanhope energy. He's very kind of like all over the place. But there's always an element of truth at the core of what he's saying. Sincerity, right? He's coming from a good place. And Brenda just can't, doesn't know how to deal with it. Look, his fists are clenched. He's scratching. He's clawing. What to do? What to do? You know, fucking... The, the thing about fighting, dude, these days, there's a lot of fucking pussies. Especially Americans. The Americans are the biggest fucking pussies. How so? Like, I mean, how many current American champs are there? Correct. Like, you know, you look at this badass fucking dude, like, just knock me out. Like, bro, it's like Americans are soft as fuck, dude. Too much fucking Starbucks. Life is fucking too good for you, motherfucker. We're too comfortable. I'm almost like, I'm almost, I'm almost hoping Russia fucking nukes us. Just so our fucking nuts get a little bigger, dude. You guys are too soft. <laughs> too soft. Yeah, fucking beta males. They're fucking man buns. And Come on, say something, man. Joke around. Enjoy something. We're too soft. You just repeat. So it doesn't have to do. Come on, get involved. Shit, there's probably a couple man buns behind me. Let me see. Yeah, there's less. He had one. Remember when he, when Brennan had a man bun? One man bun. One. No, well, Dude, I mean, but here. they all could have he, fucking man buns. We could yeah. have some. You, so you think you're like the last? Yeah, I'm the last you, white trap. I'm the '90s, bro. Patrick fucking Swayze, <laughs> ride motorcycles, dude. Fuck hot women. So Stop, you don't. Dude. So you don't see a lot of Americans. Well, it's also there's this big surge of Dagestanians and Russians because they come up doing it. Yeah, well, and not they come up doing it because they're hard fucking men. You could take you could exactly. take MMA fighters who've been trained since they're kids and they're still fucking pussies to the Americans. Like my main training partners, not a lot of them are Americans. If I do train the Americans, they're usually like D1 wrestlers. They're like they have grit. Those to kids them. are tough. Like yeah. Bo Nickel, you and Bo Nickel, like the two Americans doing the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, but most Americans, you guys are fucking pussies. I don't know what happened to you guys. Maybe the plastic in the water. The Great White Hope. 
I don't know. I, I'm sure Joe Rogan knows why. Let's ask this fucking he guy. He might know. Yeah, we, your we buddy call him after. Yeah, we should yeah, call we'll him. ask him. Why are we yeah, such pussies? I like pussies? it on his fucking why podcast. Why are we such pussies? That's the guy that gets me famous. I could write a fucking book deal after going Joe Rogan. Maybe. I'm just fucking joking. Yeah, it's different. But... You're a good comedian, bro. Look, I'm funny, too. <laughs> <laughs>
fucking the Terminator before he starts fucking his maid. We had, we had <laughs> good, Sloan. bro, we had good people. They would ride motorcycles. They like guns. They would fuck hot women. They would fight people. We had John claude Van Damme. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now we got the fucking Rock, dude. We had Chuck Norris. And again, I like the Rock. The Rock's a likable fucking guy, <laughs> but that guy's a fucking pussy. And this is your kids are looking up to. Jesus Christ. So let me ask you this, Sean. Who, who's, who's tough in your eyes then? In today's world. <sighs> That's what, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Like you There's guys, none. here's the thing, dude. Like Roadhouse, I was thinking about this the other day. You guys all seen fucking Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze? Yep, they're redoing it. Your boy Connor's in it. But they were thinking about casting what Ronda Rousey at one point. Did they joke about that? She was casted. She was supposed to do it. Yeah. Fuck Ronda Rousey, guys. How do you put Ronda Rousey in the same category as Patrick Swayze? Ronda <laughs> Rousey's a soft, soft woman. His thing. You know what Ronda <laughs> Rousey do to Patrick Swayze if they fought though? <laughs> I don't know about that, dude. I would fuck Ronda Rousey with both hands tied behind my back. Yeah, I've never seen a woman, well, at least not unconsensually. <laughs> <laughs> he just said to his face, he would fuck up his ex <laughs> with both hands behind his back. I don't know if you meant fuck her up in a fight or if you meant fuck her up sexually. Either way, God damn it. He's on fire. He's on fire. <laughs> What? But you're the number seventh middleweight in the world, Patrick Swayze. I Bottom mean, line is, dude, here's the thing, you guys. Women are very strong. They're very amazing. I love them. But women are weak. You know, women are <laughs> fucking weak. My manager, Tim, he's like this big, jerks off Izzy for a living. And, you know, he could probably fuck up Ronda Rousey. Oh, man. I don't know. Not like that. No, dude. If you watch Gegard Mousasi wrestle with Ronda Rousey, it's like him playing with a little fucking puppy. Like, you know, like... Fucking, what is Ronda Rousey gonna fucking do? Like, is the entire movie about her trying to get Tampax in the fucking men's restroom? Like, what the fuck are we script. doing? I didn't read. <laughs> it's kind of refreshing how fucking unfiltered he is. You don't hear people talking like this at all in media. But it also explains why Brendan put this out unedited, it looks like, because. You know, this is probably gonna be the best part bit of material he's ever had in his sight. Is uh, Zachary Brendan's dying inside. <laughs> This guy's like one, he's one, he's like cancellation in a human form, right? If you ever wanted somebody to get rid of all your platforms or to put all your deals under jeopardy, Sean Strickland is all. <laughs> How many communities or people has he offended already? It is only nine minutes in. Read the script. Yeah, fuck, dude. All right, moving on. Here. No, let, let me feed you. Let me feed you. Yeah, fuck. So, I'm yeah. Not, I didn't get so, so you get lessons. too fired up. Let me feed you fuck so you don't get too fired up. All right. Yeah. Appreciate you. Nah, this place is good, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Paul is here, and that means it's time to shit. Jesus Christ, he looks absolutely battered. If that's what success looks like, I want no parts of it. God damn it, my guy. Lay off the booze, get some sleep, put some moisturizers on, maybe get some cucumbers under those eyes. Like, holy smokes. Maybe he filmed, to be fair to you, maybe he filmed his little ad reads in between shows or in between doing like six shows, of, you know, in the same day. But holy shit, he looks haggard, isn't it? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Dave, down that bush you're working with, fellas. Punk and Spice Latte, and you're like, man, this bush is getting out of control. It's like Jumanji down there, my Levi's. I got to... Get your pants and run your motorcycle after eating this. Yeah, no, that's good, man. That's good. So I'm not really that hungry, but not to not to break the fucking fourth wall. We're supposed to eat, right? This is the fucking podcast. No, you so. don't even have to eat. Oh, well, that's you can just stare good. at it. Thanks, you guys. don't have to do anything. Really fucking good. You man. got a fight coming up. You oh, don't have go. to. I'll I'll eat yours when you leave. That's how this works, dude. I'm living off coffee today. Black coffee? No, fuck no. Are you kidding me? I'm not a fucking. 
You're not, I'm not a, a man. savage. I'm not a man. Not <laughs> fucking that whole rant. Cream and, cream and fucking sugar, dude. Dude, I thought for sure Patrick Swayze <laughs> drinks it black, for God's sake. You know, Patrick Swayze is also fucking dead. You know? <laughs> this is a fair point. Like man died of cancer. You drink black coffee. Drink some cream and sugar. Be fucking happy. <laughs> that might do it, dude. Nah, dude. Life is fucking miserable enough, dude. Enjoy your cream and sugar. Die of fucking diabetes. Be fucking happy. Eat some fucking gluten. Be a fucking happy guy. Why not? Yeah, why the fuck uh, not? That's a good message. Yeah, but it's nice being in this fucking studio. My yeah, balls oh, aren't it's sweating so, it's anymore. So hot, it's dude. fucking nice in here. You yeah. guys should see it, man. It's fucking it's nice. It's not. Thanks, brother. One of your uh, your buddies slipped the beans that used to date Ronda Rousey. Back to a hot second ago. How was that, dude? How was that? You married? You got a girlfriend? I have a wife, two kids, my man. Oh, shit. Yeah. So we won't go there. How was Ronda <laughs> yeah. Rousey? You bagging she, fucking crazy? She was crazy? cool. She was a sad... I'll tell you what, I've been around. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking to him like he's in the bar. How is it to have you run Rousey? Does she fuck good? <laughs> it's like, what, 10 years plus on from that happening? He's legitimately got a wife and kids at home. And this man's asking him about how it was like to be in Ronda Rousey after he just finished trashing her outside and telling and saying that she's only in the movie to what to do Tampax adverts or something. He wants to know all the gory details about how they got what they got up to in flipping the bedroom. Honestly, Sean Strickland is an absolute legend, man. Oh, this is already one of the best sh interviews ever. Like, <laughs> exactly. A married guy that never wears a wedding ring. A married guy that never calls his his wife an actual wife. It's always my girl, my girl, my girl, which is very infantile and sort of like disassociative. I feel like you know, yeah, or maybe I'm being put on projecting. Calling somebody your girl is very this. It's kind of like you're not really trying to claim the title. You're trying to keep it loose and kind of open. You know, I can do what I want, which you can't really, to be honest. But hey, oh, Sean Shikans are hilarious. Savage? Are we talking about a savage? Or are we? I'm, I'm telling you, Bubba. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I don't know what women you have in your gym. Her, when she was coming up, savage, my man. I've seen her beat up dudes. Savage. Let me tell you why I hate Ronda Rousey, you guys. I'd love to hear it. Do you know her at all? Have you ever met her? Never met her. Okay. I'm sure she's a really sweet so girl. So take that with a grain of salt. She did, like, a really hot, like, uh, sports illustration. I love, I love this. I love the L.A. or the Brendan version of, like, not liking somebody. You have to have known. You have to have known them. You can't not just like somebody because of what you've seen about them online. You have to kind of meet them in real life. If you don't meet them in real life, you can't not like somebody. It's impossible to not like somebody in their eyes if you haven't met them in real life. So annoying, isn't it? Like, we're, we're just regular civilians. We're regular people. And again, even just this person, Sean Strickland, he may be just be like, you know, I try and do my thing, but I don't need to meet somebody to kind of form an impression of them or just of what they kind of put out there. Obviously, they don't need to care about my impression, but you can formulate an impression of somebody based on what you see on them online. And you know, Ronda Rousey post UFC, not the most likely, not the most likable person. Traded one, she had like almost a nipple showing. I'm sure you love that, <laughs> <laughs> or you didn't care. Mm. But let me tell you why I hate Ronda Rousey. Oh, the the tongue out is nice, isn't it? Right, the tongue out to grab the food is a good look. Like a really hot like. Uh, Sports Illustrated one. She had like almost a nipple showing. I'm sure you love that. But <laughs> or you didn't care. Mm. But let me tell you why I hate Ronda Rousey. So Ronda Rousey goes on Ellen DeGeneres, you know, who is a known cunt, by the way. Jesus she, Christ. Clear. And she said <laughs> after her loss, she thought about committing suicide. And after that. After the Holly Holm loss? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And after that, I was like, you are the weakest fucking human being I've ever met or I've ever, ever heard speak. And after that, I hated her. Like mental fucking midget. Oh, I can see. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh, Sean Strickland's a fucking legend. This is absolutely crazy. He's saying Ronda Rousey is mentally weak for suffering a crisis in confidence after having a whole life and identity ripped away from her after that devastating loss to fucking um, Holly Holm. Holy smokes. See from your perspective how you can think that. I, I think for her, she's playing- Were you with her during the time or no? No, uh -uh, when she lost, no, way before that. So I, th I think for her, there's so much expectations on her. Her mom, I don't know if you know how she grew up. Yeah, and her dad like killed himself too. Correct. But, but here's the thing, dude. So it's in, right, it's in her family. Here's the thing, dude, and this is my... This you also, is, I'm at, also, before you go on, you're also talking about the most famous person in the UFC at the time. Oh, yeah, no, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you right now. But you're worth 
multi millions, multi. And I mean, this is this is why you you have personal insight. You are one of the most famous people. Mm. People love you. People want to fuck you. They want to marry you. I mean, you probably at the time. Yeah, exactly. Probably. <laughs> no offense, but like people love. People, what do you say? Hold on. What do you say there? I mean, you probably at the time did too. Famous people. People love you. People want to fuck you. They want to marry you. I mean, you probably at the time did too. <laughs> no offense. Sean Strickland really wants to fuck Ronda Rousey. I get the impression. He really wants to fuck her. <laughs> he really wants to hate fuck this woman. I swear to God. Look at <laughs> Brendan. Look at Brendan's head. His entire head is facing the bowl. He doesn't even want to give him too much eye contact. He doesn't want to give him too much encouragement. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> but like people love, people love this fucking woman. There's kids right now that would fucking cut off their hand. For one more day to live, for going sure. through chemo, and you go on an Ellen show after mm. all your money, and you mm. cry, you talk about fucking suicide, like mm. you are the weakest motherfucker. Like, if you haven't, if you haven't had a gun or a knife to your body at some point, like you probably aren't even my fucking friend. Mm. But like, it, it, she wasn't contemplating suicide; she was fucking depressed. And, and after she did that interview, I just it ruined everything about her, me, her to me. It's like I can see how you think that. And, and kids these days, you know, this is another thing with fucking kids these fucking days. Like, since when did suicide become fucking cool? He's so happy that she pivot. He's so happy he she he pivoted off of fucking Ronda Rousey. Like, never has somebody been happy to discuss kid suicide <laughs> after you know a, a, a touchy subject because he involved their ex. <laughs> cool. Like, and you guys, it's and an the, easy way out. And no, it became fucking cool. Yeah. They made some stupid fucking Netflix show. What, Thirteen Reasons? Oh, yeah. You were. I didn't watch that, dude. Like, when I was a kid, no one talked really about suicide. Never. It wasn't fucking... How old are you? Uh, 31. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it was. wasn't fucking cool. It wasn't an option. Yeah, and now, you take these kids these days, and every fucking kid has to have some, like, persecution. Let me tell you why, like... Let me tell you why, at this one point in my life, I was oppressed. I contemplated suicide. No, you're a fucking snowflake. You've watched too much fucking TV. And, like, with it's Ronda TV Rousey... TV and social media, too. And that was with Ronda Rousey. It's like... She needed She's some back again again like, running around. Let me tell you why. <laughs> let me tell you why, like, I'm a victim. Like, no, you're not a fucking victim. I can see how you think that, but one thing you should know is Rhonda does suffer from mental illness. You we all fucking suffer from mental illness. Bro, you, you don't suffer from mental illness? I don't. You, you, don't, you never went through depression. You've never contemplated suicide. Never. No, oh, fuck. Maybe he's a fucking sociopath, dude. Maybe. Nope. Yeah, he is. <laughs> That's a brilliant read. <laughs> Maybe I'll search it. Nobody, nobody, in this fucking, nobody in this fucking room is. No, 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 no. You're not Jeffrey Dahmer at all. No, come on. Let's relax. I have to play the suicide at one point in life. Nobody in this fucking room. Fucking red shirt guy, he did. Every motherfucker at some point, not every motherfucker, but a lot of us have laid in bed and thought to ourselves, like, man, I'm really sick of this shit. Like, I'm fucking done. And, and to go on Ellen and to say, I'm a multimillionaire, I'm beloved, I'm loved by the world, and I. And I and I thought about it. Let me get a hug. Let everybody rally around me. That's some weak ass shit. But you're you're mad that she did on Ellen. You're not mad that I, she felt that way because yeah, you just said you felt that. way. No, I'm mad because it's like, how are you so un? How are you not self aware? Like, I mean, you travel. You've been to these. This circles. is you know what? This is funny. He's making an actual good point because at the time, if you remember correctly, even though I think everybody responded really badly to Ronda Rousey post UFC career because she never really took her losses with any kind of grace if I remember correctly all of her losses towards the end she walked out of the octagon before the other person was even hand was raised if I'm not mistaken or maybe didn't do interviews she just ducked out she didn't do any press after nothing completely iced it and if anything kind of completely dismissed the entire MMA community maybe because she got some trolley element on her side too but she was really up her own ass. Like, yeah, someone said, yeah, she, she thought she was God's gift. She really had a really stinky attitude. That's what people responded really badly to. And in every interview she had where she mentioned, where she was asked about the UFC, she never had any good things to say about the UFC, nothing good to say about the fans. And people don't like that sort of stuff, innit? especially the fans that like, they kind of invested in it. They sort of take it personally. And obviously they're not fans of her as well. And at the time too, you know, this woman is fucking badass. She can definitely beat up a lot of men. She'll definitely beat me up. So I can understand what he means. Like this woman's a badass. She clearly was on top of the world at one point. Then the moment you start losing, suddenly you have mental health issues. 
she never had them before when she was winning, but when she started losing, they suddenly popped up to the point where she's on Ellen and you're declaring you have it. So I see where he's coming from, but it just comes across wildly insensitive because it's kind of, he's kind of teasing. He obviously wants to fuck her himself anyway. And it's really strange coming from him, but I see where he's coming from. Fucking, you've been to these third world fucking countries. You're talking about people, man. They don't have running water. They don't have fucking roofs. Like, there, there's girls getting raped by their fathers as we speak, getting fucking beat. There's so much fucked up shit going on in the world. And if you look in the mirror and you can't acknowledge how blessed you are, like, sure. I just, I can't fucking deal with that. I get that. I can't even be right around you. Let's take another little break from chatting and sh- Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, Previn saying she used to poke fun at mental health when she was winning. Exactly. It's all, situ- it's all circumstantial mental health thing. Using it for your advantage at the time that it's on. But when, you know... When you're winning, it was never there. So it's strange and obviously a lie to some extent. I, I, not to harp on Ronda Rousey, I just, I fucking do not like her. I, 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 you would change your tune if you met her. I'm sure, but here's the oh, thing. Oh, I hate all that stuff. It's the LA stuff, isn't it? If you met her, if, no. Sometimes you're allowed to just form an opinion of somebody based on what you see. You don't need to meet everybody to then change your mind. This idea that you have to like everybody and everybody's cool, it's like, oh, it's so exhausting. You guys have Swap. similarities. Here's the thing, you have similarities. Here's the thing. You're a nice fucking guy, dude. Yeah. You're a nice fucking guy. And here's the problem with nice fucking guys. Whenever you meet another nice person, you don't want to be like, hey, you're a fuckhead because you're a nice guy. But like calling nice people fuckheads is one of the best things ever. Like, you know, like you're <laughs> but, talking but about. Not the lim- but not if they're nice. But, you're, but if they're an actual nice person, there's no reason to call them a fuckhead. But then like you're the, the liver asshole. king. You're talking about the liver king. I'm talking about the liver king. Nice person. But he's a fucking asshole. Here's my thing, Sean. You don't know him. But I do you know, know. No, you don't know. I know what he stands. No, you, know he's, no, you don't know. Oh, they're going to be arguing over the liver king, for fuck's sake. Somebody that Brendan only met the other day. He's now arguing for the liver king. And guess why he's arguing for the liver king? Can any of you guess why Brendan is cucking so bad for the liver king? Should I give you a reason why this man might be so enamored with the liver king? Should we take a look at the fire and the kid? fucking youtube and see why the liver king might be getting this unabashed support and love from the one the only the only brendan shaw should we check it should we check it of course we should check it let's check why he is so enamored with liver king i want to see this from my own eyes anyway let's see this let's see the fighter and the kid let's see and we have to check exactly why he's so enamored with Liver King. I think it will make sense now if we check it now. Let me see here. Let's go here. Come on. Oh, Josh Wolf is on here recently again. Josh Wolf, as he calls him. Let's click it there. And let's go on videos. And let's see why the Liver King is getting so much hype and so much protection from Brendan, even though he only met him the other day. He had no idea this person existed maybe a week ago, and suddenly now he's his best friend. I wonder why. Oh, would you look at that? Would you look at that? Huh? Would you look at that? Let's move this fucking chat over here. Could this... Come on, move the chat. Could this be the reason why they're cucking for the liver king? Could this be the reason why? 200,000 views. (laughs) because he's banging dg exactly maybe that too Two hundred thousand views the episodes before that even the episode with fucking dave rubin only got ninety one thousand views the ones with themselves eighty one thousand views 85 151 the the dana white stuff obviously that makes a lot of sense but that would get more 103 of course and anything to do with drama and controversy makes me get some more but usually Usually, it's always about 90, 80. Then Liver King comes on, somebody they only met. They only met the other day, and they get 200,000 views from this guy. So it's clear why they're going to be cucking and trying to defend him on that platform. It makes complete sense. But it's quite embarrassing because he only met him the other day. And now he's kind of defending him vociferously in the face of Sean Strickland, who I don't really know why he doesn't like the Liver King. I'm actually curious to find out why he doesn't like him. (laughs) Let's see. Why does he like the guy? No, no, you don't, no. You don't meet as an asshole from YouTube. No, 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 so no. So no. that's like that's like calling somebody that you don't know an so asshole. So your your persona isn't no reflection of you. I could go and say whatever I want. It's not reflection. 
Exactly. That's that's why people don't like Brendan because he's persona online. We never met the guy in, in person. He probably is super lovely, but from his persona online, he comes across as unlikable. What do you mean? What do you mean? So here's the liver king. What do you from mean? The, you're saying from his? Yeah. So he's this nice guy. He 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 peddles supplements. He lies. He's probably on the roids. He talks about masculinity. He walks around the shirt off. That guy is an asshole. He is no better than a fucking woman. But we all highlight him because he has some fame. We put him on a show. But that man is an asshole. And fucking wait, he's an asshole because he's just because a fraud. He's just a phony. He's a fraud. Mm -hmm. Like he's just he's a clown. And like we all sit there and like in 2022, the day of social media and TikTok, we're all like, oh my oh, god, I agree. Let's Let's put this asshole up on a pedestal. I agree. That guy is no different than a fucking beta male woman. No I fucking agree. different. My, my only caveat with that is, so his his message is right is to eat healthy, live like the caveman. Do so if he's promoting health, I don't give a fuck how famous. He but is. again, I will say he does say a lot of good shit about eating. That's true, isn't it? So basically, he's saying as long as he's promoting health, I don't care if he's a liar or a cheater. Same with him. As long as I'm making people laugh, why should it matter all this stuff, right? Eating, eating clean. Yeah, I'll give that. that. So his main message is eating clean, living like the caveman did, right? I don't give a fuck if he's on steroids. I don't give. I don't give a fuck. But again, it's just time. like it's a gimmick, dude. It's the fucking gimmick. Like we live in a world with fucking gimmicks. Just be a normal motherfucker. That's fair. Put a shirt on. You do fucking steroids. <laughs> You're selling. I just. I don't like. I don't like how we live in the social media world, where you have people who are, you know, Norm Macdonald did a great one. He talked about like an astronaut going to the moon. He's like, fuck man, like what do I got to do to be famous? Motherfuckers going to the moon. Like what do I got, and we only know like one or two of them that went to the moon. He's like, how do I fucking top that? Now you have 2022 fucking like the Kardashians and like. Well, they're not going, to, they're actually barely even getting out of the But more yeah. people know the Kardashians than the motherfuckers that land on the moon. Because well, we. Buzz Aldrin, right? That was yeah, from, I mean, yeah, but. old I mean, school, dude. But, but I'm saying though, it's like. We live in a world where it's so easy to be famous. How can he just not get points? He needs everything kind of laid out in excruciating detail. Can't you get why he's what he's trying to say? God almighty, man, the nitpicking. This is like, maybe it's just a defense mechanism, though, so he doesn't want him to go off, off topic. But it's like, yeah, we know. Like, just God almighty, just go with the flow. Go with me here. Just kind of, you know, try and pick up what I'm putting down. This and For the, the intellectual bar is going down so much that if I want to be famous, I don't go and have an intelligent conversation. I act like a fucking idiot. I go That's in, one way to get famous. But that's they, there, we, There's other people who get famous from being smart. Give me TikTok, other than Joe Rogan. And Did you say TikTok? I mean, but, but give me who else? Other, Jordan Pop, Peterson. Jordan ben Peterson. Shapiro. You, you're naming three people who are conservative icons. Most people- No, most, I'm, no I'm saying whether they're left or right. There's, and, and most, there's people on the left who are smart. Most there. people, you go talk to- Name one, people, name one. Nobody's listening to Ben Shapiro and, and Jordan. You have- his, 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 his tax income at the end of the month would beg the devil. Yeah, but again, but again, we're talking about like the vast majority of like 18 year olds to 25 year olds. I don't even know why I got on this fucking tangent at this point. No, I like but, it. I, I'll but entertain. if you, oh, that yeah, Liver King, why? I'll, I'll, why, ent why I'll entertain it. Brendan's getting absolute. Brendan fucking hates this so much. He's so annoyed. <laughs> I'll entertain it. Should not be nice to assholes. Why nice people, why nice people, you should call them assholes for being assholes. Because we live in a world where, like, you know, you look go back, like, motherfuckers would wear suits, they would dress nice, they were talking away. Now, if you want to make money, you want to be famous, you got to be an outlandish, out I mean, look at me, for instance, you got to be an outlandish, you got to walk around with your shirt off, you got to wear a rash guard everywhere you fucking go. We just, like, we just got to go. rash guard. We just got to, I mean, that one fucking weirdo. We just got to. about John Denner? <laughs> yeah, John fucking He's a Denner. smart dude. Man. Oh, he's a fucking, again, another fucking weirdo. I wore a rash guard to a wedding because... It keeps me warm. It's no, you're a fucking weirdo and you want fucking attention. Exactly. You're pandering, exactly. You're pandering exactly. to Tim Planet fucking douchebags. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> oh my god. It's brilliant. He's destroying anybody. <laughs> Brendan is lying in his he's destroying everything. He ripped into his ex-girlfriend. He ripped into his idols comedically. He's tearing apart all these friends. Oh my God, this is brilliant.
This is fucking British. Planet well, but again, you, all the Tim Planet guys fucking worship that fucking guy. And I love Tim Well, they Planet. worship Eddie Casey, Bravo. Casey, I'll, I'll give you a shout out. My boy Casey Hasselstead in Vegas. Fucking guy's a killer. If you're ever in Vegas training him, Tim Planet guy, one of the best coaches ever. But anyways, we talk about D Danaher. John Danaher, Dan, yes. What are the John things? Danaher, yes. But he might be a smart guy. He <laughs> smart his guy name. He comes Change jiu-jitsu. He comes from you, jiu-jitsu fox, and then you, he manipulates people like, I wear a rash guard. I'm a fucking weirdo. <laughs> and everyone, like, he grates his quote like fucking following. Like, we, we but, just, but my thing is, Sean, oh, look, he's, he can't understand. He's never actually, this is the thing with Brendan. He's never actually spoken to real people. Real people have these opinions. If you have friends who are just like normal people, they have like batshit crazy opinions. Like, just, you know, I don't know. Um, they're like, yeah, I could be up a flyweight. You know, those kind of guys you meet, right? Like, yeah, I could be up a flyweight. Like, no, you do know that he doesn't matter because he's small. He's a skilled fighter. He would absolutely murder you. It's even a woman flyweight would destroy you, right? But they don't think they're like, no, 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 no. If you gave me a week to train, I, I could, I could be up a flyweight. And it's always really crazy time frames. Like, oh, give me a week, give me two weeks, give me a month. They think they could suddenly be able to tr beat somebody who's kind of spent their whole life training. So he's never actually been, he's never actually spoken to a normal person, like a, sorry, like a casual fan. That's why he's kind of so put off by this. Doesn't actually get it. <laughs> and it's really fucking fucking with his mental. He does he's never he's never talking to somebody who doesn't like things <laughs> like like aggressively <laughs> and has some genuine hot takes. Because that's the thing he always says, "Oh, I'm shadow banned or this or whatever." It's like, no, you're not shadow banned. You don't really have any strong opinions or anything. You don't stand for Jack Shrevish. Oh, this is absolutely ma amazing, man. World like, of why, clowns. Why, why World of clowns. But why did he create that cult like Fallen? Because people are fucking dumb. It's not because he's a talented no, because people outside are the fucking, box thinker. No. But you have these people, like, I mean, who the fuck is John Danaher? He wrote a book on jiu-jitsu? No, he created a lot of the moves that th these guys use. But again, at the end of the day, dude, we live in a world of fucking <laughs> clowns. And that's one thing I'll say about you, dude. You're not a even Joe Rogan. You guys aren't a clown. No. But the breed of, of, of intellectual people is going down. I, and I agree with you that. And, and we are a dying fucking breed because, like, what we have now, like, it's a dying fucking breed, dude. Let me ask this shot. Who do you like? Hi, <laughs> Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Just Joe Rogan? I mean, it's hard, I'm man. I'm sure he's done some stuff to piss you off, though. Uh, I mean, We all do. If you talk long enough, you're, gonna, you yeah. can't, you're not going to be pleased with everything anybody says 100% of the time. The, oh, the shut problem up. is, dude, like, I get along a lot with like Russians and like a lot of these like harder people. Because That's you, you grew up hard, brother. Well, yeah, because I talk to these fucking people. They're not clowns. Yeah. They're they're just they're just, just solid fucking guys. Yeah, they're tough. And then you come to America and you got the Ronda fucking Rousey. No offense, to you, I know you like the girl, but like you got, <laughs> you got these fucking just soft. <laughs> that, 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 I love how he keeps mentioning he liked the girl. They broke up like years ago. <laughs> He keeps throwing it out there. I know you liked her. I know you loved her. Who you want to fuck her? I want to fuck her too. This is amazing. <laughs> I know Ronda, Ronda Rousey. Did not and, and let me tell you, let me tell you, Ronda Rousey's a hard bitch. I'm She's fucking you. strong. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you, Ronda Rousey. I mean, she fucking went in there and like she fucked people up. Mm -hmm. As a fighter, Ronda Rousey deserves all the credit she gets. Mm -hmm. All the credit she gets. But when she I say rough, when man. I say soft, that's not what I mean. Soft. Tell me what your I mean. Soft, soft just is. like oh, you're talking the way she helped. Yeah, dealt you with the you loss. think you think you take any you think you take Alex Pereira any of these fucking Brazilians and you give them all this fucking money and they go get knocked out, they're going to go on the Ellen and be like, well, I, I went back to my country. Um, I, 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 uh, I know running water, no food, no electricity. Mm -hmm. And I looked in the mirror with all my millions and I thought about killing myself. Mm -hmm. Fuck no. They're going to be like, man, I came from fucking nothing. I can't even drink the water in my country. Yeah. I'm a happy motherfucker. I and so what that. I mean, that's what I mean by soft. I get you. And, and the problem is, too, the other thing we have... That's also her perspective, right? But, she has no other perspective. But she again... Didn't, her, she, she, she didn't grow up in the favelas. Her perspective, and this is another thing like the modern generation that I fucking can't stand. It's always perspective. Like, let me tell you Brendan Schaub's perspective so you understand why his views suck. And you're like, oh, well, I, I, I get that. No. He does that annoying, uh, condescending, touching thing. That Brendan does around other people when he's trying to interrupt them. You'll touch them and does that annoying touch thing, which is super annoying to watch. 
So it's cra- it's funny to see him get subjected to the same shit, and clearly in his head he's like, "Stop fucking touching me! Stop fucking touching me!" <laughs> I don't agree with anything you said. I'm regretting this fucking interview. Stop fucking touching me! Stop fucking touching me! But obviously Strickland's a fucking, you know, like fucking, you know, A star level alpha, and he just keeps doing it, doing it anyway. He doesn't care. <laughs> Motherfucker, you don't get that. Just because you have a perspective and I could somewhat relate to it, <laughs> it doesn't mean it's right. And, and that's exactly. the thing with like rock. Exactly. Rachel, Rachel and Joy, these, these random tangents are burning into Brendan's soul every time Brendan thought he was in the clear. Sean keeps bringing her back up again. Exactly. <laughs> He just keeps, it's like a callback. Oh, yeah, and Ronda Rousey. Oh, yeah, and Ronda Rousey. Oh, yeah, and Ronda Rousey. Oh, yeah, Ronda Rousey. Ronda's it does, though. She grew up, her dad committed suicide. She grew up, her Bro, mom straight. I will tell you about though. my dad. I My dad was laying in bed one day, laying in bed with a 45. I fucking walked up. He was talking about suicide, and I was like, Dad, you should fucking do it. You know, you should How fucking do it. I was like 17. I was like, your wife left you. You're unemployed. You're a fucking drug addict. Your life sucks. Like, you should fucking do it. I took the gun, put it to his head, put his hand on it, said, do it. Didn't fucking do it. Died at 50-something of cancer mm. and miserable. Fucking mm. miserable. And now you could all look at that and be like, oh, Sean, you advocated for suicide. Look, I didn't advocate for suicide. Yeah. I, I, I knew that he would have been better off, and he died miserable fucking the cancer chemo all can't he, did, he was so fucked up on drugs dude by the time he figured out he had cancer like it was everywhere yeah fucking miserable and, and this is the last thing i'll say on that there's this guy <laughs> solid guy holds pads of pi <laughs> he shared the most distressing disturbing flipping like dark story ever right and then he's talking about some guy with pads <laughs> He's a legit psycho. He's a, exactly what a wholesome story about his dad. At the age of 17, he nearly assisted his dad in suicide because he said his life wasn't worth living anyway. And then he's it's like, what? And we're talking about some kickbox trainer with pads. Oh my God, man. Sean Strickland's fucking incredible. Oh, man. But yeah, it's you know what? I'm going to leave it there for now. Because it's already getting to f- half five here in the evening, in the morning, and I'm gonna play this this whole interview or the the the, the last half, the twenty minutes left, um, when I do a second stream. So I'm gonna save this and save it for another time. But yeah, that was absolutely incredible, man. Sean Strickland's absolutely amazing. Gonna watch the rest of it after.